Welcome to the latest version of some very fast industrial artwork from the Ariel car family. This is the Ariel Adam 4. As cars get bigger, quieter, and more boring, the Atom has remained a beacon that cuts through the fog of disconnection. It offers a rare experience, but with the Ariel Atom 4, they say they've refined every single piece of it. So has that dimmed the light a bit? No, not even a little bit. So this Atom, unlike the three generations before it, is all new. The reason for that is the engine behind me. It's the two liter turbocharged Honda engine that you get in the Civic Type R. It's the same transmission and shifter as well. When Ariel received the specs for that engine, they realized that the engine was too wide for the existing chassis. So they said, well, if we have to redesign the chassis to fit the engine, Let's try to fix as many problems as we can with the existing car. So they changed this car from nose to tail. The chassis is wider, the wheelbase is longer. They redid all the arrows, so they were able to increase downforce while reducing drag. They moved the intercoolers from the side to right behind me, also further reducing the drag. This whole intake has been redesigned, sharpened a little bit. It's more efficient while being smaller. Instead of having the exposed roll hoop, there's a roll hoop underneath that little cover back there, as well as this larger optional one. They expanded the cabin a little bit. Is it comfortable now? No. Did you need another inch of uh, shoulder room? Not really. They also updated the entire dashboard. They moved all the controls up here. So I have the brake bias controller, fire suppression, uh, traction control, blinkers. It's all up here instead of being like sprinkled around the cabin like an Easter egg hunt. This screen is brand new and it's much, much better than the old one. The old one, looked like an Etch-a-Sketch or a calculator. It was just gray on gray. This is a full color display. It's got my, my gears, my tachometer, speedometer, shows the boost setting I'm in, oil temp, all that stuff. Cheese. Cheese and rice. The biggest changes though were in the suspension. And not just the Bilstein dampers, which are adjustable. Those are standard now instead of being an option. But the big difference is in the geometry. They changed all the suspension pickup points and the geometry and engineering with them to try to reduce squat under acceleration, dive under braking, body roll, and most importantly, bump steer. Some people might say this isn't a streetcar, but it is. I have headlights, blinkers, it can do streetcar things. Watch. This also gives me a moment to contemplate things on a deeper level. The shade is nice. With my iced coffee safely secured in the car's only cup holder, I picked up lunch and noticed another of the Adam's features. Look, I got my bank windows right here, keeping bugs, debris, rocks from getting in, or uh, me from picking up that change right there. Thank you very much. See? Totally livable machine. Whoever made this cup, kudos to you, because right now there is a wall of coffee sitting against the seam where the lid meets the side of the cup, and not a drop is leaking out. Nope, I was wrong. I was wrong. Now because this has a slightly wider chassis than the last one, they actually were able to enlarge the storage compartment in the front. Calling it a luggage compartment would be absolute hyperbole and a total lie. Storage, it can do that. Because it's a little bigger, 
gives me a good idea. I need to pick something up for Dai to welcome him to the track, so I'm going to run an errand. A bird is going to eat my sandwich, isn't it? With the cavernous trunk completely full, it was time to get back to what this car does best. All right, here we go. Let's have fun. Listen to that. The sounds vary from blow off to air moving to, to miter saw to cat calls. Jeez. Oh, um, will, will someone get the tea kettle? I, I would get it, but I'm driving a space ladder right now. Thanks. It's not cheap, it starts at $96,000. And this has a couple of options in it. One of which is the performance pack, costs about 10 grand. That gives you a limited slip diff, traction control, launch control, and a boost controller, so you can turn your power level up and down. At max power, it has 350 horsepower. I know a lot of you on the internet are gonna think, oh, 350 horsepower, that's not that much. Have you noticed there's no roof or doors? <laughs> back also comes with a louder exhaust, but I haven't been able to hear the exhaust since I started the car. <laughs> the sound of a sudden cabin pressure problem in an airplane. Oh my gosh. You know, there are some downsides. It's not comfortable. The seat padding is optional, which is like joining the army and them telling you to bring your own mattress. The pedal spacing is a little bit off. The gas and brake are too close together. It's a little hard to hit the brake without hitting the gas. You gotta wear earplugs while driving it, of course. But, you know, this is meant to be fun. This is meant to be exciting. And it, holy crap, it is. Yeah, it is. Very few street legal vehicles will give you as much sensory input as this one. Very, very few. Whoa! The Atom wasn't meant to be a road car. It's a track car. And that means it's time to give it to Formula Drift Champion and Pike's Peak Hill Climb record holder, Mr. Dai Yoshihara. So let's do it. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> oh my god. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh my god. All right, so how's it feel? <laughs> I can't talk. <laughs> it feels amazing. All right. Let's bring it down a little bit so we can talk. Okay. What do you what do you think? What do you feel? Man, this is so much fun. So much fun with the lightweight car with the you know a lot of power, right? I actually drove in uh Adam 3 a long time ago. Big difference actually. This got more power, but it's not as tail happy as it was, so it's a lot more grip. It seems softly sprung, but but they said they engineered out a lot of like the diving and squatting. Do you feel, does it feel stable under acceleration and braking? It does, it does. Okay. And then once the rear kicks out a little bit, you step on the gas and get the rear sport, then the, the, it doesn't slide. How, was it good when you were sliding it? it oh yeah, good? it's very controllable. That's good to hear. But again, it's very neutral, so you can make it over or under from that moment. Wow. Yeah. 
This means if you're not committed on the throttle, you might want to just get the grip back and the car's gonna shoot outside. So you're gonna be, you know, committed. Oh, okay. Or unwind the wheel otherwise, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. It's not like slide forever, it's like you have to commit it. Yeah, that's why I, I kept traction control on, because I'm not you, that's why I did that. <laughs> But you know what? What's killing me right now is the pedal. It's so close, gas pedal and the brake is so close. So even I'm doing that here in tow, still, you know, the gas pedal is moving at the same time. So I'm giving a little bit gas when I'm sort of slowing down, which is kind of sketchy, so. Yeah, you don't really want that, right? When you're trying to slow yeah. down for a quarter, you actually hit the gas. So if yeah. I get the car, I would move the pedal a little bit more, you know, separate. Yeah, I totally agree. I had the same problem in traffic. What do you think of the engine? It's turbocharged now. First time it's turbocharged. Yeah, a lot of power, a lot of torque. Yeah. Uh, but you know one thing, that I think the rev is pretty low, so it feels like the engine's still going, but it hits the rev pretty, like, right away. So you have to kind of change the gear quite a bit. That's the downside. I feel like if this car needs more taller gear, then you can, you can have more fun. Right, or if it was uh, like a higher revving NA motor to like 8,500, you get those revs. All right, let's go fast and scare the crap out of you. Right. <laughs> that the Atom is a truly unique experience on track and one that is hard to match in anything other than an open wheel race car. But he felt that the rawness and speed could be daunting or dangerous to the novice driver. It sounds cool, even through earplugs. It's technologically simple, but the stuff it has works well and is easy to use. I love the way it looks. It's minimal, but shapely. So I give it a 10. And I see it as my generation's Caterham 7, making it a guaranteed classic. However, Dai completely disagreed with me. He doesn't like the way it looks, so he doesn't think it'll ever be a classic. The result of our average scores is 40. left us a little gift here that got nice and steamy on the <laughs> road over from Palmer. But they found a cake to fit the frunks perfectly. So uh, thanks guys, hope to see you soon and uh, hope you enjoyed the car. <laughs>